So today we're going to be looking at installing OpenStep, which is uh, a version of the Next Step operating system that was released for the x86 architecture, as well as for the Spark architecture. And uh, um, so for me growing up uh, at home, my, my introduction to computers was uh, through the Apple II series and then through the Mac and early Macintosh series computers. When I got to university, I got to experience something really interesting for the first time, and that was a Unix workstation. Now, the one I used was a uh, Sun Spark station uh, running the Solaris operating system, which was a, a Unix uh, operating system. And I loved it. You know, I loved the power of Unix, and I loved the graphical interface that was on it. Now, at that point in my life, I hadn't really used Windows 3 very much yet, Windows and Microsoft Windows and, and DOS. Um, so I was coming at computers from, you know, the Apple II, Macintosh, and then now uh, Unix workstations. So my uh, summer job put me working, uh, doing desk side support uh, in a, a huge office. Uh, and most of the computers were running DOS and Windows, which I found kind of disheartening but there was one department that was running next step computers or next computers running the next step operating system and I loved these because uh, first of all it was a Unix based operating system uh, which I was familiar with from from university and then the graphical interface was unbelievable for the time we're talking early 1990s um, and they were a joy to use a joy to support so Next Computers were created, uh, it was created by um, Steve Jobs. He had left Apple uh, at the time and he came up with this idea where they created these, these high-powered workstations with this amazing operating system. And uh, the third sort of component of all this was the development environment that they created. It was uh, basically the beginning of object or like object-oriented uh, development through a, a really clean GUI and uh, it was extremely powerful, extremely easy to use, extremely quick to develop with. And so you would think with this amazing hardware and this just wonderful brilliant operating system plus these development tools that this would be an absolute hit. Unfortunately it was not. Uh, I think a big part of that was the fact that the first commercially available next computer cost about 10,000 US to begin. Um, and so they only sold, I think it was something like 50,000 units. Uh, so they next actually ended up stopping creating hardware and just focused on the software side of things. And that's uh, when they developed uh, the open step, which was, uh, uh, ported over for other architectures, including the Intel x86 architecture. So keeping that in mind, I thought I'd like to install it, see what happens. Um, so I don't have a PC from that era to try it on, so I'll have to use uh, uh, a virtual machine. So I'll be using Oracle VM uh, VirtualBox, um, and I'm going to install it and see what happens. The first thing we need to do, of course, is obtain uh, copies of OpenStep. So the first website I found was this one, and I'll be putting the links uh, down below. Um, and this is where I got uh, so the ISO for the CD, for the install CD. So the install CD is the one that's called OpenStep 4.2 Intel User.ISO. And just above it is also the uh, ISO for the developer tools uh, CD, which you may want to grab as well. I won't be discussing that in this video. So after obtaining that though, I figured out, wait a minute, I can't get it to boot from CD. And of course, machines back in those days didn't boot from CD. So I found this other website here, which uh, uh, I'll also put a link to down below. And uh, in addition to having files, it also has step-by-step -step instructions and I, kind of based my install mostly on this uh, this page. Uh, so what I did, I already had uh, the uh, two uh, CDs, the uh, user and the developer, uh, but I needed the install disk floppy image, the driver's floppy image, 
and the network driver and the patch or bundle, uh, which is a CD ISO. Now one thing to note, for the two floppy images, um, they had a, an extension of dot floppy image, which uh, VirtualBox did not recognize, so I had I just renamed them to a dot IMG and it worked perfectly. Um, so those are the, the files you'll need. And then in VirtualBox, you'll need to create a new virtual machine. I named mine OpenStep42. The type is other, the version is other unknown. I gave it a memory size of 128 megabytes, which for that day and age was would have been quite a powerful machine. So I created that. Uh, now for the virtual hard disk, um, I just left it at two gigabytes. That's what it uh, defaulted to. And again, for that day and age, that would have been huge. So that's more than adequate. Um, for I went back into settings and in system, I uh, made sure that uh, the hardware virtualization was turned on. Uh, then in the display settings, uh, the video memory I set to 64 megabytes and I enabled 3D uh, acceleration. Uh, now for storage, um, I pointed the uh, CD drive to the uh, file, the ISO file of the uh, Intel user CD. That's the disk that it will be installing from. Then I had to also add a, a floppy controller and a floppy disk. And the floppy disk I uh, mapped over to the uh, install disk. Uh, again, with the IMG extension uh, on it. And uh, then I booted. So we boot the virtual box. There's a 10 second wait before it begins uh, the boot. You'll see that every time you boot uh, the operating system. Um, please bear with me that the left hand being chopped off. That goes away in a second. So one to use English, one to prepare and install OpenStep. Then we have to insert the device driver disk into the floppy drive and hit return. Now we want to hit choose our adapter, so hit 7 twice, and then 5 to choose the primary secondary dual thing, and then we repeat, so 7 enter, 7 enter, and 5. And now we want to hit 1 to uh, continue without loading any more, and away we go. The next mock operating system is uh, starting up. Uh, so now it's uh, reading off of the uh, CD. Um, so this will just take a few seconds. Now we want to hit 1 to install OpenStep onto this particular disk. Uh, we want to type 1 again to erase the entire disk. Type 1 to start the installation. And uh, it says this may take a few minutes. That's an understatement. It takes forever. I'm not going to make you watch it all. I sped it up 64 times. So... We zip through that. That took, in real life, uh, quite a few minutes, actually. So now we want to remove the floppy disk and hit Enter, and it'll reboot. So that'll just take a moment. And here it's rebooting. The memory count up, again, the 10 second wait. And which I uh, skipped. Now it's going to ask you to put in the uh, driver floppy disk again and hit one. And it's opening uh, open step for the first time. So we can uh, patiently watch as the little spinny thing spins. It's checking the disk, configuring the drivers, starting the network services, and startup is complete. <clears throat> Now, uh, for this alert, you can just ignore it, hit OK, and it'll pop up once more. So you just hit OK. Um, now you'll notice it's all in black and white. We'll get to that later. For now, just uh, accept, hit save and accept as it is. And it's going to say it's incomplete, but that's OK. We'll just go with it for now. And now here's what we can do. We can uncheck the languages we don't want. I don't need Swedish, Spanish, Italian, German, or French. Um, but I will show you uh, the other things that are going to be installed. So you just hit install. And it begins installing. Now this I've again sped up uh, 64 times because it takes quite a while to go through. 
and I don't want to make you sit and watch files be copied. That's not interesting. So now uh, what we can do is eject the floppy disk and hit restart. So it's going to restart the computer again. Memory count up, 10 second wait, and then starting open step again. And we'll go through checking the disk again, configuring drivers, configuring the network, starting the network, and startup complete. So what we have here is where we choose our language. The, I only have English installed, as you saw earlier, so we'll just click OK. And here we are at our workspace. Now, every time we start, I get this error with the floppy disk. I don't know why that is, uh, but you can just ignore that. Now, we're going to eject the CD because it still has the installation CD in there. And we're going to pop in the... Uh, the driver update and the Y2K disk. Uh, so we'll open that. You'll find three files on here. And so we're going to copy those three files. I just moved the menu out of the way. Copy those three files to the me directory uh, so that they're no longer on the C. Well, they'll still be on the CD, but they're in your uh, me directory. Uh, it'll take a few seconds. So as you can see, they're grayed out. Uh, just be patient and wait until they're uh, almost there we go and now double click on the on the patch tar file that'll bring up the archive inspector where you can unarchive it and uh, once that's started you can actually close the uh, archive inspector and uh, there it's grayed out uh, it's because it's still unpacking once it's unpacked that'll turn there we go and uh, you can see this, so this is the patch for Y2K and a few other drivers, etc. So we're going to go to the terminal by going to Next Apps and then double clicking on Terminal App. And we're going to run the uh, app installer program uh, telling it to run that uh, package file that we just unpacked. So we'll go to Super User and then we'll type in the path to the installer and then space, and then the path to the package file. So it was in the me directory, and it was called os42mock uh, user patch.pkg, or sorry, 4.pkg. Make sure you spell it correctly, I suppose. That's important. So it opened up the uh, patch uh, behind that, so we'll just bring that to the forefront. And we'll click here on the install button. There we go go um, and it's an Intel machine so we'll leave that checked hit to start and then begins we're gonna get an error message saying that some of the files are already there just click OK continue through and we're done that so we can close the terminal and we will log out and we will power off <clears throat> So it's going to turn off, it's safe to turn off, and we'll reboot. So go through the uh, startup procedure yet again. So here we have it. And again, the floppy disk is unreadable, that's okay. Just click eject and then click OK. Uh, so now it's in black and white and as you can see with the resolution you can't really see much on the screen so we're going to fix that so we'll click on the computer icon go to next admin and then we'll go to the configure app we will now go up to the monitor so uh, what we'll do is we'll scroll scroll down and we'll use the visa driver which you'll see there click on add And then we'll uh, select a display mode and we will go uh, as it was suggested in the uh, website I was uh, following 1152 by 864 and that also fits nicely in a, a nice window on my uh, computer that I'm running this on uh, you don't want to pick something that's bigger otherwise you won't see the entire screen you'll have to scroll back and forth to see it so uh, I also remember to hit save, uh, otherwise when you reboot, you'll have to go through that process again. 
So here we are, um, turning it off, rebooting, and uh, startup procedure. And you'll notice it's in color and it's in a much higher resolution, uh, which is what we were hoping for. So we boot it up. And it's just going to take a moment to do that. And this is exciting to get to see a new install, brand new, ready to go. I love it. Starting new network services. And here we go. And again, it's giving us the floppy disk, so we'll just eject. I don't know why that is. Uh, so here is what the uh, desktop is supposed to look like. It's in full color and a proper resolution. Uh, so it comes with some demos. So the one that everybody points out first is Boink Out, the uh, Breakout clone. Um, as you can see, I'm not a very good uh, breakout player. And I thought I hit that one, but whatever. So here we go, Boink, Boink, and Boink. So uh, I won't make you watch that for too much longer. Uh, we'll go, uh, so I'll show you some of the uh, other things that uh, they have in the list here. A whole bunch of different things, including uh, Mandelbrot app. But here's Backspace, which is basically a screensaver. So here, just flying through space, pretty generic, blah, blah, blah. Um, boink, which is a bouncing ball. And you can see it, boink. Boink, boink. Um, very entertaining. That's what these high-priced workstations were good at, is uh, bouncing a ball. I mean, it was 3D rendered, uh, so I mean, that was pretty neat for the, the day. It was a good uh, sort of demo. So I'll show you a little bit more. In the Me folder, you'll see uh, a few folders. There's an apps, so we can have our own personal apps. Uh, currently, there's, of course, nothing in there. Um, our library folder. Now here's some more of the next apps, uh, including the Edit app. So uh, this is basically just a text editor, very simple. Um, but you'll see something neat. So we can uh, change the uh, format of the text. We can open up the font panel. And this is a standardized font panel which can be used from, called up from any application. Um, kind of similar to what you see in modern operating systems, um, how they can call various reusable uh, functions or very uh, reusable uh, windows. So here we go, we'll set that to times, you can see, and then we'll just quit that. Um, so basically, yeah, that is the installation of OpenStep, uh, so a next step version that runs on uh, x86 architecture. So we'll just shut this down, and that is our installation.